In the first video, we covered basic microphone techniques that can help improve your live performance. In this video, we'll go into a little more detail and talk about how you can control the dynamics of your vocal performance. Who knows what the future will bring, but currently there are no smart microphones. They will hear only what they're pointed at. So if it's not pointed directly at your mouth, it's not hearing exactly what you are singing or saying. Sounds that are off axis will be amplified a little bit, but will not be as clear as sounds that are on axis. And with some mics will have a colored or slightly distorted sound. So for clarity and volume, you need to point the mic directly towards your mouth and keep it close. It's okay for your lips to touch the mic grill. Remember, if you own your own mic, you and only you sing into it. The closer you sing into the microphone, the louder and fuller your voice will be. As you back off or turn the microphone away from your mouth, your voice will sound quieter and thinner. So this means that you can control your vocal volume by varying the angle or distance to the microphone. This is very important because you can use this technique to balance your voice to the music and control your dynamics. The word dynamics, in a musical sense, refers to the volume of a sound or note. Being in control of your dynamics means that when you sing quietly, you can still be heard. And when you sing or scream loudly, you are not overwhelming the rest of the music or the audience. A sound engineer can control the volume level of the mic by raising or lowering the fader or volume control. But then you are reliant on having an engineer and hoping that the engineer knows exactly when to raise or lower the volume. You can use a dynamics processor to automatically control the volume, such as a compressor or limiter, and many engineers will use them to a certain degree. But they can change or color the sound of your voice if used at higher levels of compression, and can make the microphone more sensitive and lead to feedback. Ideally, you will have a sound engineer to mix your performance. And if so, keep in mind that you are an audio team. You can control the extreme dynamic changes by using good mic technique, which will make the engineer's job easier and make for a better stage sound. Keep this in mind. If you are on a loud stage and you move the mic away from your voice and head, the other sounds on the stage, drums, guitars, bass, and so on, will have an opportunity to get into your mic, and that can vex your engineer. Your voice is quieter than a drum or an electric guitar amp or a bass amp, so it has to be amplified many times more than the mics on those instruments. So if you think about it, the vocal mic will probably be the most sensitive mic on stage and therefore more liable to pick up all the sounds around you. Your body and head act as a shield to reduce a lot of the ambient stage sound and helps the mic pick up just your voice. Here's how you can minimize other sounds getting into your mic. As you move the mic away from your voice, keep it pointed directly towards your mouth. Practice this technique so you know how far you can move the mic away from your voice before the ambient sound starts creeping in. Work with your audio team to get the best sound out of your PA speakers. Using a hypercardioid mic will greatly help reduce ambient stage noise. One trick that a vocalist can do to increase the perceived sustain of a note is to start singing with the microphone further away when you have a full breath and then move it closer as you run out of breath. This gives the effect of maintaining the volume of your sustained note, even though you're physically getting quieter as you're running out of breath. This is a good example of how you can use mic technique to control your sound. We'll go into more detail on mic techniques, and we'll talk about proximity effect in the next video. Thanks for watching.